So now I'm going to show you how to change the filters on an RODI uh, multi-stage filtration system. This is the bulk resupply. I believe it's the six stage filtration system. It basically has three cartridges. You can see one, two, three here. Then it has an RODI unit here. And then way over here, we have a two stage uh, deionization resin. There's timers that you can uh, estimate when you need to change your filters. Um, it's a really good practice to set those timers uh, to try to understand that. If you don't have a flow meter, you can also just estimate how much water's flown through by how much water you've made by keeping track of your water changes and um, auto top off. So you can do either one of those methods. Both should work. Uh, before you do change your filters, Make sure you have a towel because there'll be a lot of water everywhere. And the filters that I am running are, I basically have three filters here. I have a pre-filter, which this is filter floss at five microns, helps clean up some of the sediment and prolongs the life of the downstage filter. The next filter is a five micron um, carbon block filter. This is a charred coconut type media um, from Bulf Reef Supply. It's for chlorine and volatile organic compounds. It's not the specific filter for chloramine. Now I know there is some chloramine in this water um, and Bulk Reef Supply did a lot of uh, good studies on looking at the chloramine and how their special chloramine filter blocks are a little bit better for it. But this is the ones that I have on hand. And I think in general they'll do good enough for my tank. And then the next one is the one micron uh, carbon block filter. And this is a high capacity catalytic coconut shell carbon. And then once it goes through that, it's gonna go through the RODI unit. Um, inside this unit, there's actually a little RODI filter. And this is a basically a tube with a membrane. If you can look really closely in here, there's also these little spirals, and that's actually the membrane itself. And that enables the water to be um, basically filtered in a very magical way. Um, I don't know all the details and physics of it right here, so I'm not gonna try to say something stupid, but it has to do with osmosis and reversing it. And this one has a 20 to one ratio of rejection water versus water that is actually accepted and passed through the filter. So that's something important to keep in mind. It has to do with basically the rate that the water can um, transfer through the uh, membrane. Uh, you can also do a system where you double up the membranes and you can make it more efficient and reject less water. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove these. Always hand tighten them. If you crank them down to tighten them, uh, it's going to be really hard to loosen them up. So you pretty much always need this to loosen them. And another thing is if, if, it, if you turn it on, just check for leaks really quick. If it is leaking, um, then you can loosen these and make sure that the gasket's clean. That's really important. And generally you can still hand tighten it. It'll work. If you have to give it a tiny bit, of pressure with this to stop it from leaking. Maybe that's okay, but it'll be really difficult to get the canister off. So this one's actually, Ugh, this one has a lot of water in it. So we're gonna be pretty careful. Set this under. Yep, that dumped a lot of water. And there's actually not even a filter in there. Because I knew my filters were bad and I was just cleaning it up. So this one is the one that we're going to put the carbon block in. The process is so easy. All you do is unwrap it, throw the paper away, and then there's already gaskets on either side. You set it in. Symmetrical too. Set it in there and then you just screw it back. There you go, and it's in. Now we're gonna do the next one.
Wipe it down, take out the old filter. So, these carbon blocks are kind of hard to tell. Um, if they're dirty, they never really look that dirty. Um, that's because the filter floss takes out most of the gunk. And I'll, I'll show you what one of the filter floss things look like. They can get kind of gross. Make sure that you're always wiping things up because a lot of these cabinets aren't as waterproof as you'd imagine. Ugh, it spilled a lot of water. All right, so this filter is actually uh, really interesting. So if you want to compare the colors of the filter, this is a dirty filter. So this is the stuff that I'm continually drinking from my tap water. This is a clean filter. And the interesting thing about this is you can kind of see the particulate size of the filter. So the filter of the sediment in your water. So the filter is a five micron filter, but that's only five microns um, right in the center. It's a little, these are variable density filters. So it's a little looser on the outside. You can really see that when you look down at the filter like this. So it's lighter on the outside. You can definitely see that the sediment doesn't really get caught until the, the filter tightens up, which means the looser types of sediment are already cleaned out of the water. So it's only the finer grain sediment that's getting in our water. And it's a little brown. That's the color of it. So you could also take pieces of this filter, maybe do a chemical analysis on it, see how much lead and stuff's in your water. But you know what? I'm not too worried. It's in the filter, so at least the fish don't get it. I might be drinking it, but that's fine with me. And let's swap them out. And this is all pretty easy as well. Pop it in and you're done. All right, so now we've changed our main filters. Today, I'm not gonna show you how to change the um, this because it's kind of gross and a pain to change, but the RODI resin the RODI resin is a little more annoying to change because you kind of have to like pack it all in and it gets everywhere. So now I'm going to show you how to replace your RODI filter. So I have the filter here and the way this is set up, the access point is on the other side. So you have two options. You can basically pop this thing off and flip it around or just take the whole um, system off. It's probably going to be best to take the whole system off the wall. And then see if I have enough leeway to actually bring this out. Perfect. So I have enough room. There's a tube here and there is this part here that you can rotate to swap out the RO um, membrane. Now you, it's recommended to switch the membrane out maybe about two years, but that's highly variable depending on how much water you actually uh, use in your tank. So I don't know what's necessarily going to be right for you. I'm sure there's recommendations online for each type of RO membrane. And so you can check the recommendations um, from the person that you bought it, how many gallons um, in order to swap it out. This whole system pops, pops out here that may make it a little easier, but basically I have to get this cap off. Another thing that's good to do is kind of just connect that part there um, and then and then somehow you have to get this off so we're gonna we're gonna try to figure that out so this is probably not what you're supposed to do but I have used this clamp here to kind of hold the body of this in place because um, it's very slippery while I twist this with two hands. Uh, there's definitely got to be a wrench designed for it. Ugh. But this was able to loosen it up. So once we get this out, um, there will be some water that comes out. Um, and what you want to do is be careful with your hands. It's preferable not to touch. Well, it doesn't matter because this is an old membrane. So you're going to be throwing this away, but ideally 
I'll use some pliers to help you get the membrane out. So that membrane is out. It's making a mess on the floor. And then you'll take the new membrane and this part with all the gaskets on it, that goes down the inside. And so you're just going to slide this back in like that. And then you're going to push it in just like so. And then you're going to screw on the cap. So that's pretty easy operation. It just, it, for me, it took a lot of uh, force to actually get the cap off. And it took a little bit of force to pull the old membrane out. If you want to look at this, look at this gunk that's on this membrane. Uh, there's like gray stuff. I don't know, it looks it almost looks like carbon powder or something. So that might be backwash from, from a carbon stage. Probably not flushing my membrane at appropriate times. And then you reconnect this little part here. Push it in. Ugh. There we go. Pull it out. It should be good. So now we have changed one, two, three filter parts. We've changed the RO membrane, so it's brand new. Should give us some better performance. And we should be ready to go. And the only other things that I'll do is change the batteries on the filter monitor. And this section's done. And then we will do the deionization resin. So the next thing that we're gonna do real quick, the battery's dead on this. You can just take that off and you can swap out the batteries. This uh, little flow meter, and you can buy one, or in this case it came with it, um, is pretty helpful, but is really confusing um, to do all the settings and set it up. So that's my huge knock on it. I can like never remember how to set the settings right, but in order to reset your flow, go to the stage that you're working on. So this is stage three and you hit set once and then you hold down set for two seconds. Very confusing. So set and then hold down set. And then it goes back to zero. So now we've reset everything and we can see that that's for 3,500. So that's how many gallons I'm flowing through my carbon block. And my filters I have set for uh, 2,000 gallons. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my pre-filter also for 3,500, just so I switch everything at the same time. Um, and for me, it's just more important that everything's convenient and in sync uh, than that I might not be, you know, losing some performance and pressure near the end. I think even this device doesn't clog nearly as fast as the previous place I was at in the water I was using. And you can just hold down the up key in order to go a lot quicker. So it'll make things easier than uh, clicking over and over and over again. And so yeah, I've decided previously on 3,500 gallons. So now we're at almost there. 3,300. 3,000, all right, 3,500, and then we're going to click set. So now we can go through stages, and I'm just wondering if this stage needs to be reset, so let's reset that. Now it's still saying change, and I don't know why. So there might be there might be another setting to get that to go away, but for now it's going to work. Everything's at zero G's. So now we're set. Now we just leave this, and when we turn it on to start making water, it'll turn on and start counting gallons. Now the very last thing we want to do is we want to wash out this RODI filter. We don't want any of that water um, going into the tank. 
So we're just gonna run everything out into the sink for a little bit and that should help us clear that out. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Puff Daddy Reef where I showed you how to change your RO filter on your reverse osmosis system. Uh, if you like this channel, uh, please subscribe and if you have any questions, leave a question down in the comment below. I really appreciate your support so thanks again for watching Puff Daddy Reef.